Finishers MMA, finishersmma.com, at finishers. That's how you find them on social media. These guys have a show with us every Monday called Now We Go. You can check it out. Zach, JM, Thor, Grace, there's too many to name that come out of that school, and they are killers in the game. They are the biggest MMA jiu-jitsu school in the area, and they are owning the East Coast. You can contact them at 610-438-0746. Ask for Andrew. They are at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. They have two locations as of now, Bethlehem and Allentown. They are growing into three, four, five, six. They, I would say they are taking over, but they already have check them out on all their social media they are awesome to follow and if you're looking to get in shape you're looking to choke people you're looking to do anything at all to better your life finishersmma.com Ball, ballyrooter.net. That's not how you pronounce it all the time. I just say it that way. All Valley Rooter, Jared LaBarba. He is my plumber. He's the show's plumber. I'm getting him plumbing business all over, and I love that he is getting what he wants. He has 24-hour emergency service. He is certified, insured, and professional. You can follow him at All Valley Rooter. He's on social media, and you can find his information at allvalleyrooter.net. Jared came down over the weekend and he fixed a problem down here he's super professional i love him as a person i love his business he grew it and uh he's doing his own thing um it's allvalleyrooter.net it's 24-hour professional plumbing services he can help you out with everything you need it's 610-762-1656 he's certified insured and professional do not be afraid to contact him for any of your plumbing needs support jared jared supports us luke delmeyer handmade custom knives uh I love Luke. It's LukeDelmeyer.com. He's a farrier, a bladesmith, and a blacksmith. He has custom knives, and the best part about it is you can take classes to make them. So not only can you take a class to learn how to make knives, at the end of the class, you get that knife. We're working on a project together. He started uh, recently getting into chef knives, so he started to make chef knives. He makes hunting knives. He can make any of your needs as far as blacksmithing. That's at Luke Delmeyer on Instagram. That is the best way to follow him. You can see all the stuff that he's Posting, he shares, he does raffles, he gives giveaways. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at lukedelmeyer.com. We've had him on the show before. You can dig down in the library, listen to how he got started and where he's at now. I'm excited to work with Luke. Uh, he's a really good friend of the show, and I'm excited to showcase his chef knife that he's making me. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at lukedelmeyer.com. Farrier, bladesmith, blacksmith. Rips Auto Detail. This guy is the best, hands down, in the area. I've interviewed him. I know his story. He's doing things that others aren't, and I am I love that he fucks with the show. I love getting the best of the best and having them support and be a part of this. That's what the sponsorship is for. I'm giving you the best people in their profession, and Rips is the best at Auto Detail. It's at Rips Auto Detail for Instagram. You follow that. He's showing you the different cars he does, and it's at 630 north nelson street in allentown pa he offers paint correction ceramic sps coatings and more this is appointment only and it's rips auto detail at gmail.com you can call him at 484-553-1366 i tell you follow him if you 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 don't know you want to know more about what he does follow him on instagram follow rips auto detail and you can see all the things that rip does he's a big part of the show we have a, a separate show we do called road dogs and you can check out his past interviews and hear his whole story. Uh, I couldn't recommend this guy more for your auto, car, boat, plane. This guy literally has done everything and he is the best in the area doing this. Rips Auto Detail. Precision Laser. Precision Laser is a family-owned aesthetic laser practice in Easton, Pennsylvania that was founded in 2019. They offer laser hair removal, laser tattoo removal, vascular and pigmented lesion removal, acne treatment, and more. Their team of licensed experts use cutting-edge technology and safe laser protocols to deliver you the best skin results throughout Easton, New Jersey, and the greater Lehigh Valley. They provide free consultations and affordable pricing to make laser treatments accessible to you all. To learn more about their services or book an appointment, 
appointment, please go to precisionlaserspecialist.com or call 484-306-0089. They are located at 42 South 3rd Street in Easton, PA, 18042. What are they running this summer? Hair removal. I'd like to get this whole thing removed because of what do I want? A summer beach bod. They are running for $165 per session. You pick two. Armpits, bikini Brazilian, upper legs, lower legs. This is what we're doing with them. I'm excited to have them, and I'm excited for them to be working with us. They're on the podcast. You can check out everything they're doing on the website, and thank you for being a sponsor. Look good this summer. Look good. Recording. It was terrible. We're recording here. It's cool. Okay. Clap. Welcome to Never Again Radio. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for um, having me. When you came down, you were like, we have so many common people and I don't know how we don't know each other because you knew like six people that uh, like Dave Reifendeifer and a bunch of other people. I don't know how we haven't crossed paths. Um, and I think that's how I ended up following you on social media was through somebody else. And you run and operate Mindleaf uh, CBDs. Yeah. So we are a local CBD processing company. Um there's like a lot of CBD stores in the area. They're kind of like popping up like Starbucks. Yeah. Um, something that sets us apart is we make our own stuff. So I have an edibles kitchen and I cook there. I make small batch edibles from scratch. I use... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to change the yeah. switcher. Okay. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, I try to like source all of our stuff from Pennsylvania farmers and we use like local products as much as we can. We also have tinctures, topicals, pet products, smokable flour. Um, before we go any further, because I want to get into the, uh, the how you did this and where you get it all from and the manufacturing, the processing of it. <clears throat> how did you even remotely get into doing this? Um, like, were you into CBDs? Is this before CBDs were kind of coming on the scene? Um, I mean, because it's not I mean, people doing it now. It's like how I was telling you, we're like, hey, there's a bunch of people podcasting right now. But I mean, this isn't something that a lot of people were into a couple years ago. So I think a couple of things were kind of happening all at once. Um, my ex-boyfriend was like a huge stoner and his friends would come over and they would be like, yo, make us pot brownies. And eventually I was just like, dude, pot brownies are so boring. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody makes pot brownies. So. I would try to make them interesting edibles and then um what were you doing like gummies yeah i was working on gummies it took me a long time to like nail down my gummy recipe but we have like um my personal recipe is like a batter i've created and we make small batch gummies that we put CBD that's cool in delta eight in now um but then also I was actually in therapy and on an SSRI and like unhappy with that whole kind of mess. Um, and my therapist was like pretty progressive at the time because this was like a long time ago. And he was like, why don't you try to offset your stuff with CBD? And it worked really good for me. So um, I kind of... When you say offset, do you mean like depression, anxiety, stuff like that that was going on? Yeah, I definitely had a lot of anxiety. I wasn't really into like the benzos thing. Like Xanax hits hard, man. It's I, like... I uh, <clears throat> was medicated as a child. I look back on it now and I, I tell my parents like they were trying to like put down like a wild horse. <laughs> and they, you know, like I, ah, I said to them, but yeah. I, I, look, I look back at my behavior and I was like, yeah, that's what I would have done. I listened to nothing. And then they were like, here you go. Take your magic medicine. And uh, I remember my buddy Josh would pick me up. And on the days I didn't take it because I forgot I'd be bouncing off the walls. And the days I did take it, he'd be like, hey, this isn't fun. Like you're not Michael. So like when I was young, yeah. I was heavily prescribed medication. And when I turned 18, it was something that like I've never really fucked with. And then when I started going to therapy, in my early 20s, I just started kind of putting work in because I was just so anti-meds. And then I like CBDs and 
other forms of doing stuff like yoga and stuff like that but i was never a fan of uh meds at all well we're like out of like the ritalin era yeah, well, yeah, like yeah. Every, no, I was on that. Kid was I was like, on that. It was oh. like 35 milligrams. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, you have energy? Well, yeah. you have ADD. So, yeah. yeah. Because Ritalin, no one talks about anymore because now it's, uh, what's the poor man's meth everybody takes? And they're like, we get good grades. Adderall. Adderall. Yeah. Adderall, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And I'm like, I don't think you should be doing that every day all the time. <laughs> Whatever, to each their own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Ritalin, the Ritalin no one talks about anymore. I was like one of the poster child for, uh, for that. Yeah. I felt like all of my friends were on Ritalin. Yeah. I didn't really, I wasn't like medicated as a kid, but definitely like anxiety was riding off the rails as like early adulthood set in and it was time to like, I don't know, get my shit together. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know. It just made me feel like very robotic to be on the medication I was on. So I wasn't really having like low lows, but I wasn't really having high highs and I wasn't satisfied with it. So... I talked to my therapist and he was like, I don't know, try weed, try CBD, try all these other things. And I actually don't, sorry, you're fine. Um, I actually don't smoke weed at all. THC like interacts with my anxiety in a very bad way. And it's funny because like I own this company. So everybody thinks I'm like a pothead and I don't <laughs> I don't partake at all yeah. like it it just really like gets me like out of breath and nervous so CBD is like the wave for me so did you try doing uh like using marijuana before you got into CBD and then we're like this doesn't mesh at all I kind of like I tried it a few times in high school a few times in college and it was just like every time I had a bad time yeah and then I would try to convince myself like Oh, it was just that one time. No, I I have friends who they've done that and they don't, that's why they don't do it. Yeah. Eventually I had to just like call it for what it was and it's just like, it doesn't agree with my system. Yeah. So. No, you can, uh, I, uh, I've messed up and, uh, (laughs) taken too much, uh, edibles. Yeah. And I've, you know, been down here by myself talking to God. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, you know, I take a little break. <laughs> like, Edibles... I, don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that's something I want to do all the time. Edibles can hit a little different for sure. Yeah. So there's like, um, two, like the two different modalities, like smoking or eating, um, any sort of cannabinoids, they're like drastically different and independent from one another. So like, if you are like the iron lung, and you just like chief weed all day and like you're fine with it if you eat an edible that's like too strong for you it could still like put you in the ground yeah because it's like going through your digestive tract is totally different than your respiratory system now did you learn a lot of that from having to get into doing the edibles for your friends um so yeah it's been a long time of me just doing this and doing like kind of independent research for myself um I've probably been at it for like seven years now. Um, Mind Leaf just got started like three years ago. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of trial and error, a lot of uh, getting labs involved and like just putting our product out there, getting anecdotal evidence back. So now when it went from you uh, being in therapy, what were the big changes when you started taking CBD from his Uh, suggestions that you noticed that you were even getting into CBD? So it kind of, CBD for me just kind of really takes the edge off. And that's what it does for a lot of people. But I think that there are, there's a lot of expectations that people put on it. Like I think because it comes from cannabis, they're expecting an effect similar to like a a psychoactive like THC thing. And you're just, you're not going to feel it with CBD. It's almost like, um, I would say it's like similar to taking like an ibuprofen. I love ibuprofen. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, like if you have a headache and you like take an ibuprofen, you're not like waiting to feel something. You're just like waiting to feel good. Yeah. So CBD is kind of like that. It's very like unnoticeable really. Yeah. And. um, Did you notice it? Um, Now, like he doesn't smoke or do anything really. Um, So when he was taking it, I was curious with how it affected you. What, uh, what, yeah, how, what took, was it like for you? So I took huge uh, doses because I was like, if I'm going to do this, like I'm going to make sure it works. But no, I, I was going to say, like I'm I'm happy that it's finally, CBDs are finally a lot more accepted because when they first came out, people were still 
had that stigma attached to yeah. him. And with my job, I bailed someone out who was a, that ran a CBD company. And what they did was they would drive in these vans and they were playing off of people's stupidity. And the vans had huge, it was wrapped in pot leaves and mm-hmm. all these, you know, the little dancing bears. And they tried to play the whole thing mm-hmm. and they were selling gummy, gummy bears. Mm-hmm. And they would go from city to city outside of concerts and just sell gummy bears and tell these kids that, hey, these gummy bears, you know, they have CBDs, like it'll get you messed up. Like this is what you can do. And they would literally make 20, 30,000 in a weekend. Yeah. But the problem is, just like anything else, they got too greedy and were like, we're going to sell all this stuff and then they're going to also have weed for themselves because mm-hmm. they're making so much money. Mm-hmm. And it really, because so after that, like I talked to these guys and they sent me all this stuff and they were like, because at one point I even convinced my boss, I was like, well, maybe we should sell this in their office. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I I don't really know if that's a good idea. And I was like, I work at a bail bond office. We have people that do all kinds of shit. And if you came in here and I would have CBDs, like, I'm sure we could sell them. Mm-hmm. But we actually contact, and this is where it gets weird. We contact, this was three and a half years ago, contacted one of the attorneys and he looked at it and he was just like, my professional opinion is to steer clear because there's no set route yet. He's like, I'd like to say yes, because it is legal. But at any point, the government can just come in and take all your stuff. Yeah. And he goes, it's just steer clear. But. So then I was like, well, now I really have to figure it out. So, yeah, I tried gummy bears first. And I was just like, I, I equated it to after I, I ate a lot of gummy bears, but I equated it. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty good. But I, um, no, I equated it to like, like I drink scotch. Mm-hmm. So if you drink your first cup of scotch, you're not drunk, but you have like a warm feeling inside and you're just, you're just enough that you're not. You just, like you said, knocks the edge off and you're just like, all right, I feel I'm calm. It's and that's like, what I it's felt like a like. body euphoria. That's what it felt like to me. And then I tried drops um, and they were kind of OK. And then I did uh vape. The one vape that I had was horrible. I mean, it was disgusting. <laughs> um, and another one had uh, they mixed in like mint. Yeah. And it took away all the horrible taste. And then that was fine. But then it's just weird. And I just, I, I don't know. I can't vape. It just bothers me. That was kind of like another uh, motivation for me to get into doing my own product line. Because once I had experience with CBD, I was using like another company's tincture. And it was working, but it just like tasted absolutely like horrible. horrible. Like, like dirt or so, like an bad. ashtray or something. But, yeah. Like, but the problem is, too, is there's, there's regulation. People put so much fake crap. On and that there literally is no regulation. Yeah. Like the government was just like in twenty eighteen the farm bill came out, they were like, hemp's legal. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. No regulatory bodies at all. So people are actually like not even putting as much C B D into products as they say they are. Yeah. Um and it's actually okay for them to do that. Yeah, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's okay to lie. It's it's really crazy. So like we try to combat that with like a lot of company transparency. Like yeah. we do tons of lab tests. We um we test our core ingredients. We test our batches. We test everything. We put everything on our website. Um, we link them to QR codes on our packaging. Because really, there's like nothing I can personally do to like kind of sell my product to people who have had a bad experience with stuff. Yeah. And it's like. There, I can't tell you how many people come into my store and are like, I tried CBD and it didn't do anything. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, let's count all the variables of why that may yeah, have happened, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, there's so many different ways. And like even said, like even like the first thing of gummy bears I got, I was like, I, I made the mistake. I looked at the package and it was like 30 milligrams. Mm-hmm. And I was like, cool, but there's like six of these in here. So it's only like five milligrams a piece. And I'm thinking, well... I thought I was getting 30 milligrams. Well, if I'm getting five, I, that's not that's not what I was aiming for. So I was like, well, now I got again. I was like, well, now I'm eating them all. Now I'm doing all. I'm gonna see. But it did. It did work. Um, it just calm. It just makes you know, just like you said, takes the edge off, whatever. But um, no, I like the uh, I like the drops better than anything. I think the so- first time I did it was. Uh- I got it for free with a, a $20 vape pen, and I didn't notice anything from it. Mm-hmm. 
Because I think that's because it was free. Just colored water with and, a twenty dollar. Yeah, pay it's pen. for free. It's for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting the pen for other stuff, and then there was like, hey, you like back then for writing notes for and how stuff? many? Yeah, from how, <laughs> how many years ago that was? That was when you had to go in and be like, hey, I need a CBD pen. Like things have mm -hmm. changed drastically in the last three years. But I don't know. Like I'm excited to get into this stuff because I've never really messed around. I'm like the only thing I really did was uh, <clears throat> the guys from the jujitsu school. They they go through different styles of uh, CBD and they different companies come in and out of there. But it was the rubbing cream I got from my dad because he has such bad arthritis. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time where my dad was like, "Yo, this I like this a lot. This is better than." me gagging everybody with Ben Gay every day. <laughs> um, yeah. Like it was just maced as soon as like menthol as soon as you come to the house. But like he really enjoyed it and then I started getting him on the C B D creams. And then that was cool to like help him out where like I look for ways where like he's constantly in pain or dealing with things and I'm now it's like what you said where like he has anxiety and stuff and I'm like, well, why are you looking to like CBDs because you have so many side effects from all these pills because you're on like arthritis medication, then you're on heart medication and it's like there's all this weird side effects just constantly crossing over and that's what I like about so CBD's like main claim to fame is reducing inflammation and a lot of these issues that we have, pain, even anxiety, like diabetes type of things, heart conditions, a lot of them are inflammation based. So like a lot of times like people are like, oh, CBD is like touted as snake oil. It has all of these things it helps with. Um, but it's really just because inflammation is the core problem. And that is what CBD is like tops at dealing with. Now, when you started getting into just getting into CBD and then you had this background from making the edibles, like all the stuff you were just talking to him about, about like the packaging and everything, like you weren't there in the beginning. How did you get into wanting to do this on this level to where you're pushing it now? So um, I have a couple of friends who were also making edibles. Um, my what my business partner's dad is a veteran who is using edibles to like regulate pain for him. Um, and we kind of linked up and we were like, this is a legal thing that's hitting the market. Um, why can't we just figure it out like figure out something to do to take to see if it helps people and i wanted a product to use yeah. that i liked better than like the shitty tasting tincture i was using so uh yeah we kind of just um planned it out we try to do like sort of unique edibles we were doing like pb and j for a while but the jam is seasonal so we're not doing the jam now but um I feel like for a while there, like every edible on the market was a piece of candy. Yeah. And I don't really have a sweet tooth, so we started doing like pretzels because I like savory snacks. The pretzels were good. Yeah, right. They're pretty good. <laughs> Wait, which one did you have? The garlic? Uh, yeah. 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 I think that's what he dropped off. Yeah, that's a good one. They were good. I was surprised because I didn't know what, <laughs> like, because the packaging is super professional, so I didn't know that you were like making all this stuff so this is my new packaging it definitely didn't look that way at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well I don't, and i don't want to get into that yet i want to get into you getting into that because this looks super pro so i was like damn i'm like is she like getting these pretzels because that was the first thing i said to you i'm like mm -hmm. i was like and you were like no we made them and i was like oh shit like this yeah. is totally well, different it was, than it was a long line for the actual product it was a long line of like uh research and development and like fine tuning our process and we really have it under wraps now but uh the packaging was not really up to snuff we were kind of trying to um make a deadline of this i think it was like in scranton they had this huge cannabis festival for on 420 uh like three years ago and it was like the first festival of that kind in this area so we were like oh my god this is gonna be great like we have to launch our business at this 420 party it's going to be awesome so all of our initial packaging was like us scrambling to make that that deadline and it it just didn't really look that good but um but that's the fun stuff looking back i mean i look back is. at my early t-shirts and being like yeah like i like even the other day i was like looking at like because sometimes people would be like how did this start and then when i really bring it all the way back i'm like holy shit like this is 
-hmm. Like you don't realize how much you're learning. And that's why I was like trying to slow down the story is because like there's a time period in there where it's you just buried your nose in books and cooking and mm -hmm. working another job and dealing with regular life yep. and building this business brick by brick. And it then, was a you know, lot of like making stuff, giving them to my friends and family, yeah. asking for. And feedback. you don't realize that's the fun. That's the funnest part. It is. It really is. I I look back at it with like extreme fondness, actually. Um, and so do my friends because they were like, hell yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, are you doing the free stuff again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's come a long way since then. Um, we were kind of just hitting the road with our, our beginning products and trying to sell them at live events. And, um, were you guys like, uh, an actual LLC or yeah, we were. You, so by that point you guys are like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is our business. Let's hit the road and start doing conventions. And then you just mm -hmm. try and so we were trying to get out the word out for us. Uh, we nailed down like our brand identity pretty quickly. Um, I went to art school. One of my friends, Chelsea, she helped do our logo. I wanted something that looked like kind of like medicinal and also like scientific. So it's like a, a mandala to like drive home like the zen of the product. But I kind of wanted it to look like an atom around the outside of it. So um, we nailed down the logo. We were trying to just really like find our brand identity so that we could go out and when we talk to people, we could be like, this is who we are. And uh, it was a lot of grinding, honestly, to like get the word out and uh, feel comfortable with what we were doing. And um, then I guess like the biggest happening to, to occur after that was like we opened a store in Easton um, right before COVID hit, like in January. And then we got shut down in March. So um that was a time <laughs> uh, it was difficult uh because our location is like prime we're on lafayette's campus we're right next to the wawa on cattell street so there's a ton of foot traffic but like when everybody goes home they're home like it didn't matter we couldn't really get like a strong feel for um how much interest there was in our store or our product or anything so it was really like kind of trippy and humbling to like go full steam ahead and then just be like it's not happening that way <clears throat> i went through a similar thing here where this was my first year getting into running this professionally and it was working and i had like all these websites lined up and then it was literally just and then you have, I think it was two weeks of just drinking. Remember when like nobody was driving anywhere yeah. and like, it, and it was like out of a movie <laughs> and it was like, there was that two weeks before people were like, okay, I'm going back to work. But, um, in that time it was, it was weird. And then I just remember being like, this is fight or flight. You're not getting bailed out. Mm -hmm. And then the way my business ended up going was totally different before the pandemic. Do you feel like the pandemic hurt or helped your business as far as what it is now because of that break? Uh, so that's actually a little difficult to answer because the retail store definitely took a hit. That was like an anchor for a while because we were still paying rent, but like we weren't allowed to be open and it was just a hurdle uh, that we had, but we've had many cause like in, the, like you said, in the last three years, this is kind of like, advanced a lot but we got in kind of at this like early phase of cbd stuff so like this was honestly like just the next thing in line of a long list of hurdles and during covid we had to uh kind of switch lanes and like put more effort into our web presence which actually has come back to us a lot so net positive i would say at this point but i'm hoping that now that like the school kids are back and uh, the store is open again. I hope it's going to be like, I don't know. What was your branding before it was this? Um, It was this the whole time. We we definitely had like the logo nailed down the whole time. It's solid. Did you come up with that, you said? Uh, yeah, me and my friend Chelsea did. Um, I like it a lot. Thank you. We have a variation of it, too. So we're starting to do like psychoactive products. It's on the uh, gummy bag. So... um. Delta-8, I don't know if you've heard of Delta-8. This is a new cannabinoid on the scene. <laughs> There's like 
over 100 cannabinoids in hemp and uh, marijuana. And Delta-8 is a THC that's derived from hemp, so it's legal, but it is psychoactive, so it's getting people high legally without a medical card. Um, so How high? Kind of high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they say it like hits at like a half of the potency of Delta-9 THC. Um, so they're like isomers of each other, which just means they're like super similar molecularly, but just a little bit off, like one leg different. And you guys are getting into making those? Mm -hmm. So I brought that for it. That's our newest product. Um, the gummies will lift you. They, uh, they have a nice mild head high. You're not going to want those? No, absolutely not. They're all oh, mine. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I have a serious question. Um, and and I tried it. I read a bunch of stuff, and I still I, I thought I'd understood. But what's the difference between like like this is an isolate and a full spectrum? Like what's the difference? Mm, I get that question a lot, so it is a little confusing. Like specifically when it, we're talking about CBD products, yeah. Um, there is a spectrum of uh, core ingredients that are used. So CBD isolates are just a single cannabinoid infused into the product and that's mm -hmm. cbd broad spectrum is like in between um so that means cbd is in the product there are other cannabinoids in the product but there's no thc in the product yeah um so what do the other ones do i mean well, it's just a different full, full spectrum does yeah. have like the trace amounts of cbd yeah. but it's still or th thc i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but it's still like the le under the 0 0.3 yeah legal amount but um so basically when there's a bunch together it's called uh the entourage effect so cannabinoids are like homies they hang out and they work better together when they're all present okay yeah yeah because i kept looking and i was like i can't get a serious answer because so half of them say one thing half say another and then they just well it gets a little confusing because like so when we're talking about cannabinoids there are so many of them but the whole like isolate versus broad spectrum versus uh full spectrum those are all under an umbrella category of just cbd products yeah so like if you're uh, we were talking about cbg yeah before that's like a totally different animal that's like CBG is my favorite cannabinoid. Um, it's actually like the mother cannabinoid to CBD and THC. Yeah. So um, when you spark it, we have it in smokable flour. I brought you guys a pre-roll. Now um, will you get into that? No. Why not? Oh, come on. <laughs> will, that, will that give him a little bit of a lift or no? Um, mild, mildly, yeah. It's more of a body euphoria, not very much of like a head high. You don't think but... it'd be the same thing as, you know, when you like smoke a cigar and you get a little bit of a buzz? You don't think it'd be the same as that? I don't really get a buzz from cigars, but I don't know. I personally would compare it to that. Yeah. Um, but that's just me. I don't know. Yeah. I wish you'd Why try Why are you staring it? at me? Because I want you <laughs> to just try it. Staring at me. The heat judging, is on. Judging me. I'm not judging <laughs> you. Uh, you can do what you want. I mean, uh, you know, I tell everybody when they come down here that he doesn't do it, and I think it's cool that he doesn't. Who doesn't do it anymore? You know, it's like people yeah. who don't get tattooed. Good for you. I drink the whole world's filled with people with yeah. tattoos. Yeah. Um, I, I just I just didn't know if you would be into trying. On one. I, I don't even know if you would feel it. Do you think you would? Uh, maybe. I mean, so. Let's do it now. Yeah, <laughs> Let's do it live. He just has a panic attack. No, no, I can tell you I probably would because I and that's why even when I did CBD, I was. I, I, I don't react well with stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. no, I don't say I don't act like bad. It's just like if I end up in the hospital or something, if they give me a painkiller, I'm like out, out. Like even I can't Same. take, I can't take, uh, what's the stuff for allergies? Benadryl? Mm -hmm. I spin off the planet. Yeah. I can't, I can't see straight. It's a good little nightcap that Benny's. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, I can't even take the no, tab. I can nothing. So that's like anything I take, I know that, but like I can drink alcohol. I can drink alcohol like it's nothing. <laughs> but it's everything else now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. CBG might be your thing. So, like, one of our business uh, models, like at live shows prior to COVID, we used to sample everything in our product line out. We would just have it on the table. People could come up and try it. Yeah. Because. I'm not qualified to tell you like how it's going to interact with your sure. system and like if you're going to find what you're looking for out of it. So we kind of have this like no pressure buying 
uh, type of selling that come try it. And then sometimes I send people away. I'm like, set up, set an alarm on your phone for like 20 minutes and go walk around. And if you feel good, come back and buy something. And if not, yeah. have yeah. a good night. Yeah. You know, that's such a better way to do sales. Yeah. Than just be like, talk them into something like a car salesman. And then they're like, well, I don't like this. And then they just judge you for your products when you could let them make the decision on their own. Well, I mean, like, obviously I want to make money. I want to make a living doing this. But, yeah. like, I also think that it's cool when it really helps people. So um, that's kind of the more rewarding side of things for me. When you guys were pushing this and growing it, how many products did you have right off the bat? Because I, I would guess getting into this, the creative wheelhouse would be like we can get into tincture and like you would have so many avenues you wouldn't know what to focus on so what were the main things that you had coming out the gate that you were like okay you know what we're gonna do and then this is what it branches off to we were strictly edibles in the beginning so we started with pretzels and then we had uh like a mini line that we called spreadable edibles which was the pb and j i mentioned and also we had like honey um and that was kind of it we just uh, hit the ground running with those, and I had my gummy recipe, but we um, we had met somebody that was like, everybody has gummies, don't make gummies, and then... Yeah, but everybody's gummies taste like shit. <laughs> they don't taste I know, good. And I don't mean to toot my own horn, yeah. but you should try one of those gummies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I'm serious. The rest of them, I don't... They're horrible. It's like you just... I don't know what it like, is, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because they have to use something to... to I don't know. I don't know what did so it. So cooking, like infusing with um, hemp or or weed, um, it's an herb and it's a strong herb. Yeah. Like the flavor is intense. So if you don't balance it well in whatever you're making, it's going to taste like shit. So um, yeah, it's just, I feel a lot of them just put the ingredients in and form it into a bear and just go here. Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is for you. And yeah. it's like, well, no, it, when, when you buy regular stuff, they don't just form like just throw stuff in they try to make it if people would put like even a tiny bit of effort into it yeah they they really could make something that tastes good and is yeah. like shelf sta stable and everything so our gummies are that's like my big claim to fame that's probably the product i'm most proud of um that was the one you were told not to make yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um they're they're our best-selling product yeah. at this point um because people love gummies and Honestly, like they're not like the healthiest gummy. Like people are looking for healthy candy these days. They want like vegan, no Stop sugar. Stop it! It's candy. <laughs> I, I order extra glutton, gluten, everything. Glutton. <laughs> <laughs> I just go extra glutton, yeah. and they're like, "What?" And I go, "I don't know." I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? It, I think too is I think uh, it, it's a lot easier to get people to try something if it's something like a gummy bear, mm -hmm. as opposed to say this like, "Okay, you have to put drops under your tongue." They're gonna be like. I'm not getting involved. It's got, well, oh, when we were doing samples in the beginning, yeah. the tinctures got a little dicey. Like, people would be, like, putting their tongue uh, on the yeah, droppers, yeah, and I'll yeah. be like, thank you, give me that, and just trash it. Yeah. So we, uh, we stopped sampling the tinctures after a while because we were just like, this isn't working. What's the time frames on eating a gummy as a pair as opposed to, like, doing the tincture? Is it around the same time it hits, or is the tincture going to hit faster? Tinctures Can you OD on it? Uh, you cannot... OD on CBD. If you take too much of it, you're going to get a really good night's sleep. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the fastest way to get it into your system is uh, by smoking. Um, so if you smoke CBD flower, you're going to feel the effect right away. I'm interested to see how it is. Is it like more of a cigarette or is it more of like, um, you know, like what's it compared to? Because you're inhaling it. Is it harsh? Um, it, it depends if you're used to smoking. Um it's kind of it's very similar to weed. It like how looks, much of it do you smoke? I I smoke a whole pre roll. So you'll just like you have your time. Like we recently have been getting mm -hmm. into pipes, so we <laughs> go over to the mantle and we have a pipe. Mm -hmm. But that like, that's the time though. It's like a forty five minute. You know you're enjoying it, so mm -hmm. you set aside the time to smoke the entire thing. I do, and I think that that helps with my relaxation as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like a little ritualistic, a little time for myself. Well, I never realized I was smoking cigarettes until I talked to a therapist who was working on breathing techniques is that the reason why cigarettes are so relaxing is because of the breathing you're doing mm. where you're taking the breath. And, and then I, she was like, well, you used to smoke. And then I was like, yeah, but she's like, that's why that would calm you is because you're taking the breath. Mm -hmm. Now, it's terrible stuff you're putting in your lungs, but it made sense that 
you're doing the ritual of the breathing right, to relax sense. yourself. Have you ever heard of like breath work workshops? Yeah, but I never got into it. Like the Win Hof stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it can get pretty trippy. People have like psychedelic experiences. Does anyone do that like, around here? Uh, I've heard of it down in like Philly, but yeah. not, probably not around here. Here. Oh, we should get someone to come up. Yeah. That'd be great. Would you get into I'm a not podcast? Going to fucking Philly. No, no, no. He hates Philly, but if no. if we got someone to do breathing techniques and stuff, would you get in <laughs> would you get weird with it? If we don't if we don't tape it, because I'm sure it looks really fucking silly. I'll come back and be yeah. a guinea pig. If you no, want. I love getting into like <laughs> weird stuff that I don't care about. <laughs> like one time, it was audio only. Uh, it was one of our like I don't know, maybe in the first ten episodes, a friend of ours uh, brought a, a a writer on who was also a poet. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, uh, we dim we dim the lights and lit candles. <laughs> and uh, what did we do? We did. She just like did a therapeutic poem, and he it was like he was so uncomfortable. But that's why <laughs> I had my eyes closed and I was smiling because I was like, this dude definitely is not into this. So I, I like taking him out of his comfort zone. But I would look into that. What what does that do? Like it's just. Uh, um, I think like the, the backbone of it is like people experience stress and anxiety all the time. So everybody kind of breathes incorrectly. They're yeah. not like, it's not like so conducive it's like a, to like relaxation. over oxygenation of their, like think it's just you're forcing more oxygen into your blood, which gives you a little bit of a buzz. I so it'd be like I the think. correct amount of oxygen. Or it's more. I mean, that, that's how like, um, remember seeing the stories about the um, cyclist. And that's how uh, what's his name got caught too on the buses. The German cyclists actually people died, but they would um, they would cycle their blood. So when they would cycle to go through a machine, they would add extra oxygen molecules to it. So it would be over oxygenated blood, and they would cycle through their system. So when they got they got so much energy, and they were buzzing so hard, they'd have to get out of their bus and literally just ride along the fucking bus because it was just that's how they do it. So a lot of fighters were getting in trouble too. Yeah, they were cycling in over oxygenated blood. So if you're doing breathing, I'm assuming. You're forcing more oxygen into your system, which is good for you. But when you over oxygenate your blood, then you start to probably trip out. Yeah, or... we should look into getting someone to come up here and then like cycle infuse... our blood. No, no. I mean, if we <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe, what's going on? Maybe here? we'll get some fighters for that episode. But yeah. uh, we should do something where we do like the infused CBD cooking and then have somebody come on and do breathing techniques and then just do like a real weird trippy episode which would just be fun to make you do <laughs> that's get weird <laughs> um so now when you were getting into um when you first started doing this you know you're using the instagram i'm sure to, to get the business going how were you getting this out were you going to bars and like doing like samples of the cbd pretzels were you going to the conventions like how did you get the ball rolling where you had the steam to be like okay this is working Let's keep doing it. In the beginning, it was working very slow because it was just like I have uh, four business partners it, and it was just us. And it has been just us for like the longest time. We just started hiring people outside of that very recently. Um, so it was just a lot of legwork, a lot of like in person going to shows, giving out samples to local businesses. Um, there are a couple of bars in the area that do infused cocktails with our stuff. So um and that's kind of cool. It's cool seeing my name on like the menu. Yeah. Things. Yeah. You would think um, that would sell. And then even like pretzels and stuff, every bar you would well, think. Well, the CBD aspect of it, like you're not going to get CBD pretzels at like a wholesale yeah. price of like no, a, I know, yeah. a, a bar food pretzel. So sometimes they're like, eh, maybe we'll pass on that. But it, it is kind of like niche and people think it's cool. And so bars are kind of into it. You'd We're, have to find the right bar. A lot of has cool stuff cigar like bars are like into yes. it. So like yes. the Wooden Match in Bethlehem, they carry yep. our entire product line. It's like stocked down in the basement all the time. So if you go there, you eat, you smoke a cigar, you can order a CBD. I've yet to go there. I heard about good things. It's awesome. I like good things about it. Yeah. We are actually having um, an event there on 420. So Cigar oriented? Uh, it's not. So we were talking about like issues with the city earlier, but... um. We were planning a community cleanup of Sand Island, which is like right behind the wooden match. That's where uh, that's where we did a comedy show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably the ice house. Yep. yep. Yeah. So I'm from Bethlehem. All the snow has melted back there and it's just there's garbage everywhere. Yeah. So we were gonna uh, try to sponsor a cleanup there, but uh, we didn't get approved for our permit. <laughs> Wait, so what Bethlehem wouldn't let you clean? Um, they said that <laughs> there's 
There's too many people interested in it right now, so our permit didn't get approved. Because of but, COVID, um, there, you have too many volunteers, or there's too many people trying to clean. Or is up. someone trying to steal the the spotlight, and then they use that as something they're doing? I'm not sure. I don't want to speculate. I, would, I, I don't would want to get in that. trouble saying. What. I'm gonna say that. We'll that's talk what after the show. We'll, get we'll the kick real the shit story. out of her. Yeah. Yeah. But the plan was to go and uh, clean up garbage in the park, and then um, walk to the wooden match afterwards. And we're gonna be having um, kind of like a little happy hour event where if you have a mind leave T-shirt on, you're gonna get like discounted pints. We, like I said, we have a cocktail there, so I'm sure that'll be. Like, How do they infuse it with the cocktail? The tinctures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What what flavors do you know what it is? It's like a Moscow mule. They actually call cool. it the drug mule. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's um a couple of restaurants in Easton that that carry yeah. cocktails that we do too. too. Now, did you have to approach them on that? Uh yeah, I also have a lot of friends that are bartenders in the yeah. area, so they kind of just are Hey, I'm going to put this on the menu. The wooden match, we also like do music fest in their parking lot. So. Oh, yeah, they do like that, uh, or is yeah. it the Wooden Match, or don't they do like a non-Music Fest, Music Fest over that way? So it's Music Fest, but they're private property, so, yeah, so you don't have not, to like really adhere to... It's not tied in with it, yeah. Yeah, officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice. We get to like... No, I wanted to do something with them, because yes, they were doing I love like... It, a, I hate Music Fest. Yeah. <laughs> I, love um, I love anything that goes against it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not very negative sounding, but I don't like no, it. No, we haven't uh, talked, we haven't sure talked bad that. on Bethlehem in a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> it's been a minute, man. Mm. They've been positive shows. Um, yeah, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're it's fine. been a long week. I don't like. I don't mind going back in. Throwing I a wonder if they could listen. Have you ever tried smoking alcohol? Ever tried that? I wonder mm-hmm. if you could work that into doing it. That's crazy. Oh, so you're How saying we- like a hookah? No. Well, so I started watching this one video, and there's bars that do it out west that. Um, they literally just set it up and it literally, they'll, they'll put a flame below alcohol or something and it'll slowly burn off and it's almost clear and you inhale it and you get drunk like real quick what? because it's just alcohol vapor. So My I wonder if you could work that into doing it. Yeah. Up, Cause he, he got it uh, when he was in Vietnam. What alcohol vapor? Well, like the things you said you would fill with wine and like, yeah, they heat it up, smoke the fumes. Really? Yeah. I forget yeah. the name of the company. I, I ended up getting one for Vic the one time where like, we don't think this works. And then five minutes later, I was like, I'm <laughs> hammered. Holy shit. Like it was, yeah, but it was creepy. Because you, then you would be able to do like a, but if you did that with CBD, CBD infused, do you want to yeah. do it on the breathing episode? Sure. That's <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> We're like, okay, we can't have that. Yeah. Yeah. It was the only creepy was it was like glass, like the straws were like glass. Because yeah. it was all glass. And I'm like, that looks like, that does not have a good yeah. look to it. Like crack pipe. I wonder if that would work though. I don't know. You could infuse CBD, mix it in with that, and cook it. Like I bet you that would be, I bet you that would work. So when it comes to infusion, like there's only really two ways to isolate yeah. trichomes off the actual flower. Yeah. And alcohol is one of them. So, yeah, you Hell can make yeah. like an alcohol-based tincture and just yes. light it up. See. Hey, I'm in. Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> what kept you guys going um, when it was going slow in the beginning? Like, was it just you know? Because, I mean, at, the, at that point, are you guys just doing that for a living? Like, are you working other jobs? Do you have so. other commitments? What was, uh, you know, I, I've been, you know, that was a long 20 years of it going slow for me. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so like, I know what it took personally for me to be, like, believing in it. So mm-hmm. what kept you guys going? Um. So I had a job that I wasn't really happy with uh that i was working for a long time just to make ends meet um and it took a while probably uh, i don't know maybe like a year of doing both before i could comfortably quit the other job um my business partner still kind of they they work other jobs i'm the only one that does this like full-time full-time um but yeah we kind of we kind of bid our time to just put a lot of development into making the product as high quality as we could and just slowly like trying to spread the word and like word of mouth is how we yeah. grew in the beginning. It's always that. Yeah. Uh, social media, you have expectations for it. You never know what's going to go on. Oh God, and even I now was, I was <laughs> doing, I was doing our social media in the beginning myself and I am like not even tech savvy. 
I'm like, I don't know how to do a story. I don't really know any of that shit. So uh, we just hired like a social media manager. You met him, Thomas. Yeah. He's great. Um, but it it was just like kind of horrendous. Like our marketing was like very horrendous. And I wouldn't say that like we got it together until very recently. So that is like the silver lining of COVID. Is that like we're like, okay, let's ramp ramp up our web presence and our social media presence so we're kind of like getting our footing in that way now it's tough i mean um i had to handle social media and it i tried having other people help with it and it didn't it didn't mesh well because with this business i'm selling myself as the journey as well as there's the products around it but mm -hmm. primarily you're seeing it through me mm -hmm. so that's a lot harder to pass off social media but then it same thing it isn't until recently where i was like dude like finally it's paying off doing social media for that long which isn't fucking easy at all mm -hmm. it's a full-time job it really is and then it's like then you start feeling bad if you don't post enough because like the other day my stories ran out and like i was crushing on stories and getting a bunch <laughs> of views and had you know it was like great content and then i'm like oh okay this is how i wanted it but then you take a step to breathe and then all the stories are gone. I'm mm -hmm. like, fuck, man, I need to add more. And then, you know, it's like you got to, you know, go out and like force yourself to do stuff so you can almost keep up with the monster of social media. It's, social media is like so out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I'm not even good with like my and it's not something, stuff. It's not even something that you can just jump into and like it takes off. Like it's work mm -hmm. to figure out how to make things look good. Like somebody was like, oh man, your pictures look awesome. And it's like, well, I've taken 20,000 photos <laughs> in like the last three years. Eventually I'm teaching myself how to do this better, but it's not. Yeah. It's not something that you can just pick up and do. It's really hard to, like, I'm a cook. I'm not a, a social media manager. So yeah. it's hard to, like, in the beginning when you have a small business and you're wearing, like, so many hats, it's hard to juggle sometimes. So uh, I don't know. I'm glad that we kind of offloaded that. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when you finally went full time? Uh, was it scary? It was. Um, I was nervous about, like, just having my bills paid and whatever, but I just wanted to really just take a risk on myself, you know? Yeah. Like I thought like if I worked hard enough, it would work out anyway. And then worst case scenario, I could just like go back to my other job. Yeah. That's how, um, I was looking into it. But like the first week I was like calling people panicking and was like, I don't know what to do. Mm. <laughs> because you feel like you're cheating. <laughs> yeah. I'm cheating. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. It's, or like, um, in the beginning it's like, I would have freedoms that I would feel like I was doing something wrong. And then now I look at those as like, oh, well, that's like now it's like because like, the weather's breaking. So I'll take an hour and a half to two hours to go hiking. But I need to do that because there's no windows down here and I just need to exercise for my mental. Yeah. So like I always was that stuck at a job being like, oh, I wish I could just fucking go hiking. And then the first time I started doing it, I felt bad. And then now I'm like, no, these are the benefits of you busting your ass. Yeah. Because I really don't ever stop working. Is that like that for you where you're constantly thinking and definitely new products? And it's hard. It's hard to put work down when it's something that you're creating. It's also super trippy to like create a job for yourself in the world yeah and like like i said like i'm wearing a lot of hats within the company and then outside of this like getting into the cannabis community has been fucking awesome because there's so many things going on there's all of this like advocacy work that you could get into there's like community outreach there's events all of the time and it's kind of like self-sustaining so I think that I really hit the jackpot with that. Like when it came to leaving my job, I was getting into like a very sustainable industry. Yeah. Um, so it was almost like COVID proof. You know what I mean? Like we had a growth year despite COVID because yeah. people were at home, I guess, and they wanted to smoke. I don't know. That's when um, like when I, I figured out how to keep things running. And then I was like, okay, there was a point where a perspective where I looked at this where I was like, all right, well, if you can get through the whole world stopping and like you kept this going, there's really nothing else left for you to trip over. Like this is going to be something that you're putting. And I guess that's what it comes down to when you give 
when you care that much about something. And that's why I always would say to myself, like, man, like, because this is how I was at everyone at other jobs. Mm -hmm. And then I just cared too much or I worked too hard. And then I'd be upset at them because I wasn't getting what I thought I was because I was working so hard. But then when I applied that into my own thing, like, I just started realizing that, like, I'm never going to stop working on this. Like, yeah. is that how you are? Like, you don't ever... It, yeah, it's like my mind baby. Leaf, it, yeah, like, yeah. this is what you will do now. It's very near and dear to my heart. It's, like, my... It's a brand identity, but it's also, like, heavily intertwined with my personal identity because I, I created it. So I think that it's, like, sometimes that's a little bit intense to, like, create a thing and, like, share it with the general public because there's like an inherent amount of vulnerability involved did you that. have confidence with this right off the bat or was it uncomfortable uh, i had confidence in the product but like i said like packaging was kind of like here and there and everywhere but the cool thing about it is we got into this like three years ago when cbd wasn't quite as popular so um it was like the wild west out there dude it was like so crazy <laughs> like people were putting products out that were uh questionable at best yeah and um we we hung with it we got a clearer vision by learning more about like what we shouldn't do in the beginning and then we've just been fine-tuning ever since your packaging is stepped up completely to a whole nother level when did the branding and the packaging start looking completely official like this so this is like very recent um last year in october um, I met up with another local company, 420 Print Media. They do um, cannabis packaging. I met them at a cannabis festival. And um, I just like talked this woman's ear off. I was like, I need to do a whole rebranding because I'm freaking out about my products being on shelves because there's like an anxiety involved when like you're not like super prideful about like the look of your product, like because it's representative of you, you know. So, um, yeah. We've been working to kind of uh, revamp everything, and we're just taking it like one piece at a time. We still have some things that are not um, quite up to snuff with where I want them. I didn't bring those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, where? Yeah. Yeah. No, these are these are the good guys. Um, so we're trying to do like. Actually, I should have brought a couple of tinctures with me. We have this like really cool design where. Um, we have three potencies of tinctures. So we have a 600 milligram, a 1000 and a 1500. We also have like a daytime and a nighttime formula. And when you put the three of each together, um, it creates a, it creates Ooh. like a landscape that scrolls all three boxes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Who came up with that? Like, do you do the design work or does the 420 printable place work with you designing it or? Um, conceptually, I came up with that. And then uh, one of my other friends from Philly designed the initial box and then I ended up linking up with the printing company and we fine tuned it from there. Um, where where does the colors come from? I'd say like primarily there's a lot of gold going on. So initially we chose like black and gold because we wanted it to have like kind of a more luxury feel yeah to be honest gold has been like a logistical nightmare <laughs> for like printing and like all of this stuff because every gold is different yeah, yeah um, i was gonna say yeah because then it's and then if it's metallic yeah and it's even worse because there's about thirty thousand different kinds of metallics yeah you wouldn't think so but there yeah, are there are <laughs> yeah yeah, so uh, a new thing we're doing is we're going to try to make all of our uh, psychoactive products, like foily, holography, like that, just so people can kind of look at our product line as a whole and be able to easily differentiate, like, what's going to get you lifted. What's what You said the what's the first thing that you're doing with the psychoactive ones? Is that the tincture or the gummies? No, so the, the tincture here is a, a CBD isolated product, so... Um, there are no trace amounts of other cannabinoids. It's just CBD, so it'll help with anxiety, kind of like taking the edge off, like we said. Um, if you take high amounts of it, it will help with like pain management, but you do have to take a lot. Um, but then Delta-8 THC, like the gummies, are that's like the, the head high one. And that's what you guys are getting into with uh, more products? Uh, so we're not actually sure. So Delta 8 is 
kind of like the grayest of the gray area right now because it's psychoactive. So basically what happened was um, 2018, the farm bill was signed into legality and it said like hemp, hemp derivatives, hemp, uh, any sort of hemp product is legal. Delta-8 is in hemp, but it's in like such small amounts that they weren't like, oh, we have to regulate this single cannabinoid. But thanks to like weed scientists, they're like isolating every cannabinoid and then just concentrating the fuck out of it. So uh, they're they're doing the thing. They have vapes, they have distillates, they have um, all kinds of infusion products and we're just putting them in some gummies and seeing how they go. But I do think that uh, the DEA is gonna hand out some sort of regulation eventually. So we're not really like trying to go so hard with it and then lose out on whatever if we get uh, the regulation handed down. Where do you guys see yourself uh, for the rest of this year and going into the next year? So for the rest of this year, I'm excited that things are kind of slowly opening up again. We want to do live events because it's a lot easier to connect with people about CBD when you can like answer all their questions. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, so we're doing, there's a huge um, event coming up in Kutztown on 420 weekend. It's like the 17th and 18th, the I think. The home of Ring Baloney. Yeah. Yeah, Kutztown. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know where, uh, I think it's Renninger's Farm Market? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Huge cannabis festival there on the 17th and 18th. So it's still going going to happen? It's going to happen. Last year, there was like 20,000 people there. Yeah. And it's weird to be in Pennsylvania where we're only like a medicinal market and people are just like smoking weed in a field. Yeah. So it's a vibe there. They have like bands and food trucks and stuff. Um, and we'll be there. Come check us out. What do you guys set up for your, uh, and I, I'm only interested because I like doing conventions and pop-ups, <laughs> but how do you guys set up your whole area? Uh, we're still kind of fine-tuning that too because we have a lot of stuff. So Do we, you like a, do a table or do you make it feel like a living room when you walk do, in? We do like three tables and then we try to do like edibles on one table and then smokables on another. Um, and yeah, we just kind of put tinctures and topicals in between. So... <laughs> it's it's a lot to look at so if you end up coming just like come up and i'll i'll give you the tour we can yeah, give you the I'll rundown down. of the whole table will you go down yeah, with me to get ring baloney sure i know absolutely. you won't be interested in uh the festival <laughs> yeah, <I'm... laughs> but you could drive me home <laughs> yeah it's great, great. <laughs> we'll bring someone to film and it'll be fun there's like a lot of good food there and there's I like know. glass yeah. blowers our yeah. friend, uh, we, we carry local glass in our retail store. Um, and uh, my friend Kevin will be there doing like live glass blowing. No, I think uh, meeting with people and, and going through everything. And I think that's, I've had a couple of people ask me like, hey, do you know anything about CBD? And I'm like, well, I know very little. But I think looking online, it all just starts to wishy-washy together unless you go somewhere. And that's why I always felt, but I mean, the one place that we went to, you know, a local place, I just was, it was just a weird feeling. Well, a lot of them are like franchises. Yeah. So like the weird. people who are there, they don't, they're not making the product. No. They're like choosing from like a core factory that has like yeah. thousands of CBD products and they just slap their own branding on and put it on a shelf. Um, so a lot of times like people just even in the industry don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. You just wing it. Yeah. Fake it till you make it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to wrap up. I don't want to keep you here. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, I'm going to look into this breathing. Do you know anyone that we could reach out to? I can reach out to someone and yes. try to um, and then down a breath. We can, we can book it after your, uh, when's the festival? This month? Uh, yeah, 17th and 18th of April. So um, two weeks. Yeah, so then we could do something in May and then recap the festival and then get into the breathing technique stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about you or what you were doing. Uh, I just knew I was interested in CBD and um, you were doing a lot of stuff with this other than just, you know, the gummies and stuff. Like you, uh, it was, because I, I remember when you first posted it and like started the Facebook group page or whatever and then mm -hmm. seeing it grow to this now and, you know, I would just see stuff pop up and then, 
when you came down and we were talking in the beginning, it's always nice meeting people, but then it's nice meeting people that are like super creative and then like have a business aspect to it. And there's a lot of similarities about um, just how you just won't stop doing this. And um, it's what I love showcasing on this show. And um, I just want to thank you for coming on. I'm excited to get into the products. I'm excited to get him to try the gummies. He said he's not going to try. <laughs> um, but um, I want to give you a chance to plug all of your social media and the events and everything that you're doing. Um, so go ahead. I, I never screwed that part up, and I just did. Um, so you can plug yourself. <laughs> he's, not, he's not putting your spot. Go. <laughs> yeah. And go. So uh, our social media, everything, every platform is Mindleaf CBD. Um, our, the one we use the most, our preferential one, is uh, Instagram. Um, but we also ask for like a lot of feedback on our Google page. So since I'm literally the person like spoon in the pot making the, the food, I love hearing feedback cause it helps me like fine tune my stuff. Um, so if anyone feels like leaving me a review, thank you. Yeah. Um, aside from that, we have the Pennsylvania cannabis festival at Renninger's farmer's market. It was like a tongue twister. Uh, on April 17th and 18th and uh, on 420 we have a CBD happy hour happening at the Wooden Match in Bethlehem um, if you have a Mind Leaf t-shirt on get discounts on all your stuff so uh, ooh, what after that I'm not sure breathing technique show and then a breath work podcast yep. yeah <laughs> um, do you have any more CBD questions no Okay. I don't think so. I will. I'll, if I do, I'll hit her up. All right. Um, anyone who's a first-time listener of the show, you can go to neveragainstudio.com. That has all of the information for our apparel, our past shows, uh, the audio, all the links to anything that we do is on neveragainstudio.com. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're trying to get that up. And thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And then I don't <laughs> screw that part up, but I screwed the other one yep. up. <laughs> never, never a perfect. I don't even remember the last time it was fucking. I closed correctly. <laughs>